The Lord be with you. Today is Wednesday, where we normally gather during the middle of the week in Advent to ponder the coming of our Lord at Bethlehem and to look ahead to his coming again on the last day. Uh, we, in lieu of that, we are uh, doing this worship service over video. And so let us begin. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing, let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers. But my eyes are turned to you, O God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, <clears throat> is now and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host and may glorify you forever. We sing the office hymn.
reading from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. This is what you requested from the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not continue to hear the voice of the Lord our God or see this great fire any longer so that we will not die. Then the Lord said to me, they have spoken well. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell them everything I command him. I will hold accountable whoever does not listen to my words that he speaks in my name. But the prophet who, presume, who presumes to speak a message in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. You may say to yourself, how can we recognize a message the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the Lord's name and the message does not come true or is not fulfilled, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Do not be afraid of him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> A reading from Acts chapter 3. While he was holding on to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astonished, ran toward them in what is called Solomon's colonnade. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, fellow Israelites, why are you amazed at this? Why do you stare at us as though we had made him walk by our own, by our own power or godliness? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied before Pilate, though he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer released to you. You killed the source of life whom God raised from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in his name, his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. So the faith that comes through Jesus has given him this perfect health in front of all of you. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, just as your leaders also did. In this way, God fulfilled what he had predicted through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Therefore, repent and turn back, so that your sins may be wiped out, that seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus, who has been appointed for you as the Messiah. Heaven must receive him until the time of the restoration of all things, which God spoke about through the, his holy prophets from the beginning. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brothers. You must listen to everything he tells you. And everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be completely cut off from the people. In addition, all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those after him have also foretold these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors, saying to Abraham and all the families of the earth will be blessed through your offspring. God raised up his servant and sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we gather here midweek during the season of Advent, we do so under the theme of the Advent of our Lord. Our Lord, of course, is Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, and who himself is truly and fully God. And his Advent is his coming. Now, of course, when now, of course, God, who is spirit, is uh, not as we are. He, as creator of all things, has created those things that are physical, the world, our flesh and blood, and he himself is not part of the creation. And yet, God chose to become part of the creation. He himself was not created. He is, he is begotten, not made, as we confess in the Nicene Creed. And yet, he did chose to become born. And he was born of the Virgin Mary. So he was not born of the union of a man and a woman, but was rather conceived by the Holy Spirit when he was, and then born of the Virgin Mary. So that is our Lord's first advent, the first time that he came to his people. And exactly who are these people? Well, in one sense, they are his chosen people, his holy Christian church. In the Old Testament, they were referred to as the Israelites. In another sense, it is all those whom he has created. For certainly, the reason Jesus was born, his first coming, his first advent, was for all people. And that is why he came, is for all people, in order to accomplish salvation for the sin of the world. And so in Advent, we take time out of our ordinary lives to prepare our hearts and minds for the celebration of this first coming. And many people love the time of year when Christmas rolls around. It's a festive time, and it's a time of, of joy and goodwill. Now, certainly, a lot of that may be dampened uh, in this calendar year. Nevertheless, uh, I think a lot of people are still looking forward to Christmas. We, we're not quite sure yet how it will actually be celebrated, both in our society and in our church. But we nevertheless as Christians, are going to prepare for our celebration of the first coming of our Lord at Bethlehem. And as we do so, we are mindful that when we celebrate his birth, we do so because we are celebrating salvation. This is what he accomplished in his suffering, his death, and resurrection. Now, after that, he ascended into heaven. And he will return again. And that is his second advent, his second coming. It will be on the last day. And so, not only in Advent, but throughout our lives, we are preparing our hearts and minds for the second coming of our Lord, when he will return again in glory to take us home to heaven. In the meantime, as we do so, we celebrate and we give thanks for and we also observe our Lord's coming to us in his word, coming to us in his sacraments, coming to us with his grace and his mercy and his peace as he forgives our sins. And so when we look at the advent of our Lord, we do so by recognizing the <clears throat> tremendous grace and blessing of our God in salvation. His first coming, his coming again on the last day, and his coming to us in the meantime, often as, as we await his second coming. Now, perhaps, possibly, there has been no other time, perhaps in our lifetimes, toward the, still, we're still toward the beginning of this 21st century, Perhaps there has been no other time in our current lifetime where we 
can better identify with the people of God in the Old Testament. And they're waiting and they're longing for, for what is to come. Now, <clears throat> each year that when Advent rolls around, we think about this. We think about the longing for Christ to return again in glory. And yet, it always seems, at least to me, it always seems kind of distant, like, well, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. And so we go about our daily lives. We go about all the things that we do, not giving a whole lot of thought to our Lord's return again on the last day. Well, now we have experienced something throughout most of this calendar year where we really understand what it means to look ahead, to long for something that is coming. Namely, that this pandemic will come to an end, that we'll be able to go back to our ordinary way of life, and it seems like it keeps getting pushed off and off, like, like it's not quite in within reach. And so perhaps this year is somewhat of a blessing in disguise because we can identify with those people of God in the Old Testament as they waited and they longed for the coming of the Messiah. <clears throat> now, one of the ways that the Messiah was, <clears throat> one of the ways that the Messiah was, um, was, promised and prophesied was what we heard of in our first reading this evening from Deuteronomy. This is toward the end of the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. So talk about waiting, talk about longing for, getting into the promised land. Those people went day after day after day in the wilderness and wanting to enter into the promised land. And so toward the end of Moses's life, he speaks these words that we heard moments ago. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. Now, why was it that Moses said this would happen? It is because, as he says, this is what you requested. From the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not continue to hear the voice of the Lord our God, or see this great fire any longer, so that we will not die. So they were terrified at the glory of the Lord, at his holiness. There, when, when Moses went up the mountain, there was fire and there was lightning. And so they said, we don't want to be in his presence. We want you to intercede for us. And so now Moses is on his way out. He is going to die soon. God is going to call him to the eternal promised land of heaven. And so he says, God will raise up for you another prophet, one who is just like me. And so for centuries upon centuries, they had been looking for this. And <clears throat> so God made the promise, I will do so. And he sent many prophets, prophets who, who like Moses would speak in the name of the Lord. And the people also ask, well, what about those who are not true prophets? What about those who are false prophets? And God addresses that as well. So those who do not speak in accordance with God's will, you should not trust them, but rather only the ones who speak according to God's will. Now, we do not have direct revelation anymore, such as they did back then in the Old Testament. So we rely solely on the written word of God, the holy scriptures of the Old Testament and the New Testament. <clears throat> any prophet, that is any man who is called directly, rather, I'll start that again, any man who is called by our Lord Jesus Christ to speak on his behalf, and often we refer to them as pastors, he must speak in accordance with the written word of God. Otherwise, he is a false prophet. 
he is not speaking in the name of God. Now, <clears throat> when we come to the New Testament, we see the fulfillment of this prophecy in Deuteronomy. And we see how over the centuries, as people longed for the Messiah to come, that one of the ways they were looking for him is as this great prophet. And so, for example, we see in John chapter 1 when, and I have to admit I forgot to bring my sheet up here, which had these Bible passages on it. So I'm going to go from memory here. I think it was Nathaniel who came to Philip, but it's right around verse 45. You can check it out, see if I'm, I'm right on that. But we'll just go with that. Nathaniel goes up to Philip and says, we have seen him. We have seen the prophet. And so he is thinking along these lines of what was spoken, in, what was prophesied in Deuteronomy 18. Or a few chapters later in John, in John chapter 6, when Jesus saw the crowd, multitudes of people, and he fed them with just a few loaves of bread and, and just a few fish, and when they saw this miracle, they said, truly, this is the prophet who has come into the world. And then we see also how the apostle Peter understood this in our second reading today from Acts chapter 3, where he says that Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brothers. He quotes directly from Deuteronomy chapter 18, saying to all of those people who were there after Peter had spoken to this man who was unable to walk his entire life, and now he said, get up, because, the, and, he, and Paul, uh, Peter makes the point that he himself did not heal the man, but rather it was the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The one who came in the flesh, the one who was from Nazareth, who after he was born in Bethlehem, was raised in Nazareth and lived among his people. This is the advent of our Lord. This is the coming of our Lord, where he who is God Almighty, who he who is the creator of all, came in the flesh among us. He came in the flesh in order to suffer in the flesh. So the great prophet is no, none other than the Messiah, the very Savior of the world, our very Lord Jesus Christ, who has not only come in the flesh to suffer on the cross for the sin of the world, but who continues to come to us in his grace, by his word, and in his sacraments, so that we may be ready as we look ahead, as we long for the day when he will once again return, this time in glory on the last day. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We speak the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has exalted the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. <clears throat> in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our synodical and district president, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all, all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those working hard to produce a vaccine for the COVID virus, for those in the health industry who are working hard to keep people healthy and treat those who are ill. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all those who are suffering from illness or injury, particularly those in our congregation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Alleluia. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord, let us pray. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen.
I pray the Lord's richest blessings upon you. Go in peace.